Thanks, Mike. Okay, so, um, what's that? All right, so I'll introduce myself real quick until my slides are up. <clears throat> so, one of the things that I'm going to be talking about is the value of, of having an internship or pro bono hours with a law school population or also an externship. Sometimes you have specific needs in your host nations or in, in your, um, at, your, at your job, and you don't need someone to come in and, and have a full-time position, but you may need some legal expertise and maybe a specific background that can come in and, and solve an issue. Um, Dean Antolini talked earlier, um, and, I, and I'm sorry I forgot your name, but uh, Drew, the ship captain. I mean, having someone with that kind of a background can be invaluable depending on what you need it for. In my case, I'm actually a, a, an active duty Coast Guard officer. <laughs> and my background is that I've worked with regulations a lot, doing ship inspections and also doing marine casualty investigations prior to coming to law school. And I've also lived overseas in a variety of um, environments. So when the YAP internship came up, it was kind of perfect for me. I didn't have a lot of time, but a three week internship was perfect. And I, it was something that I could, uh, I could help out with. So. Um, as I talk today about my experience, just keep in mind that it's the background of, of there's a, a large population at this law school and, and maybe there's someone that has a, a background that could be of value to you um, and they have the legal expertise. So when I went to YAP, and I, I don't have it up here, but it's basically a little bitty state in the middle of the Pacific in Micronesia. I'd never heard of it. Um, and when I first got sent the, the materials and was first told about the internship by Mike, you know, I thought I was going to go and do some coral reef stuff, maybe help them with some laws. When I, I read everything they sent, and when I got there, uh, no one was there to meet me, so I had to figure out where I needed to go. Um, so I walked around the town for a while, and I just went into different storefronts until I found someone that knew where I, I needed to be, which I found the next day. Uh, and then they gave me the laws. And so uh, as, I'm, as I'm working this, this fisheries issue that I think well, that's not really coral reef, but kind of, yeah, I, I can see it. Um, several days, maybe at least two or three days in, someone brings me the legislation that had actually been written, that I was actually there to be going over. And it was, uh, it was this PIMPAC um, Micronesia Trust, where they're trying to get them. I'll explain this. I have it in the slides. I'll explain it real quickly. So stay with me. The Micronesia Challenge is where all the CNMI, RMI, um, Guam, they came together and they said, look, we're going to set aside funds so that we can conserve 20% uh, of our terrestrial resources and 30% of our aquatic resources. So in order to do that, they need to make sure that the, these nations are going to be spending the money correctly. And the way they have it set up is, is through a PAN, a um, protected area network. So when, if I'm in YAP and I want to set something up to, for this specific aquatic resource or area to be protected, I need, to, I need to be a part of the protected area network. But to do that, there's got to be some sort of backing, some sort of legal backing. You can't just be, hey, I've decided that this is my spot, and guys, can I get some funding so I can protect it? Well, YAP has some really great community involvement, probably, I, I would say, exceptional. And it's because YAP is unlike any other place that, that I know of in that, in that YAP is owned, it, it's, it's privately owned. Everything in Yap is privately owned. The villages in Yap own the land and the water out to 12 nautical miles. That doesn't exist here in the United States anywhere. Um, from three nautical miles out to 12, that's, that's federal, you know, United States government property. Three in is state with some government oversight federal, federally, but they own everything. So with the Yamase, uh, Chief Justice Yamase case, one of the reasons they were able to get the settlement for $2.9 million is because it was um, owned by the people and they were able to bring that suit. The other reason is because YAP has four branches of government. The fourth branch of government is actually the traditional leadership. And what they had written in their constitution is that the traditional leaders are in charge of all, basically all things traditional, right? Well, if your land is privately owned traditionally, that means that the, that the um, that fourth branch of government is in charge of everything related to the land. They have been trying for four years to get PAN legislation passed in YAP, but the executive branch and the legislative branch don't get along. And so it's, they've written, 
And they've written these things over and over and over again. And every time they go, they fail. They go, they fail. Now, Mike didn't tell me this prior to going because he just kind of like, you know, you'd be great. Um, so I have two weeks. I get to the island. And they're like, yeah, yeah, no, this is, uh, we've tried this. You know, here's the legislation. It's already written. And I was like, oh, well, easy. I'm going to like be on vacation for a couple weeks because, you know, there's no legislation to write. And they're like, well, yeah, it's written, but it's not passed. It's like, well, why is it not passed? I'm like, well, they don't want to pass it. Okay, well, let me go talk to the person in charge. Well, we don't do that here. So that culturally, it's different in YAP. You don't, you don't just go confront somebody, right? It's, it's a, and, and I'm not saying that's wrong. And I wanted to respect that because I was going to march right into the legislature and be like, who do I need to talk to? Let's have a you know, meeting of the minds here. And they said, no, that's not how we do business. So I'm reading the Constitution. I'm a little bit disheartened, by the way. I'm reading the Constitution, and I'm reading the, the, uh, their, their state code. And I realize, you know, no one's capitalizing on this fourth branch of government thing. And the way the state code is written, it says the, the executive branch has the, not just the power, but the responsibility to assist the traditional government in anything related to their traditional duties. I was like, well, that's easy. I can write regulation, right, because the law is already there. It's already in the code. I can write regu thank you. I can write regulation for them um, based on the laws that are already there. We'll, we'll house it under, uh, in this case, it was the Department of Resources and Development, get it signed by the governor, and voila, we have our solution. Like, they're gonna be able to get their PAN funding. Now, the money here is important, right? How much money can, can YAP then obtain once they have, the, all they need is the, the law in the books. And I cleared it with the Micronesia Trust individuals and also FSM at the federal level. Do you need legislation or can I write a regulation based on already existing legislation? They said, well, I don't care. As long as it's a law, you're good. So uh, wrote it up, and we're talking potentially millions of dollars that can come to them to enhance their, uh, their conservation efforts. It's a big deal for a country like or a state within the FSM like YAP because they don't have other resources. They don't have the, the only thing they export is beetle nut which is a nut you chew and spit out like kind of like tobacco. Um, and forgive me if that's a, a bad generalization. So, But that's all they export. Um, they're not exporting fish. Their waters are being, I don't want to use a strong term here, but they're being invaded by um, the Chinese. There's a little thing where Yap is. Uh, so they need this extra money in order to do their conservation efforts. And let me just flip through real quick. So uh, just showing you here, that's where the reef is all around the island. Everything, everything out there is owned by them, uh, by the individuals, the, the villages. What you have in the bottom left corner, that is the men's houses. So they're sitting on that resource, on the water, and they can see everything that happens out there. So when it comes to any kind of regulation that I was writing, I wanted them to have the opportunity to um, be able to enforce that. That's written into the regulation. Up there, you can see the little uh, thatched huts I actually stayed there with some really great roommates. There they are. <laughs> and um, let me go ahead to anything I'm missing. OK, way forward. Um, not only do you have a diverse body here that can do work if you have funding, or even if you don't, under pro bono hours, there is a possibility also that you could just bring the work here, right? You don't have to send me to YAP so long as I can get good information of what you need. Hey, I, I have this situation. I need something written up. And there's people a lot smarter than me here, right? Like, I'm not one of the smartest kids in my class. Um, th th that work can be done, and it can be done effectively um, and very cheaply. And it goes on my resume, so it looks good. Uh, let's see if there's any other last things. No. OK, do you have any questions? So I think you kind of blazed through that. Sorry for the technical problems, but um, just wanted to highlight that he, James was there for two weeks, and he came up with a solution to a problem that has been lingering for three, four years about how to get this protected area network legislation passed. So this is no small feat, and um, just wanted to acknowledge that. And when James left, I'll let you speak to this, but when you left, you had kind of done a read-through of that regulation and kind of where were things when you left and where are things now? 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, I got everyone together, uh, the heads of all the agencies. The governor wasn't there, but everyone else was. And we read the entire regulation together. I asked for their input in that moment and over the next couple of days. They gave me everything they needed and they said, as soon as the governor gets back, we're going to have this signed and it's going to be good to go. Then the Micronesia Games happened. <laughs> and so like that's been ongoing until I guess just now. So they're going to have one more meet, get together, and then they tell me that the governor's going to sign it. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks this thing will be, will be signed. And uh, so you turned down the Attorney General's um, offer for a job? I, 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 I did. The Attorney General offered me his position, um, <laughs> and, uh, which I, I, I had to because of my Coast Guard responsibilities uh, say I couldn't do. But I, but I will say, though, that the Department of Resources and Management asked me if they could bring me back to write their regulations for them, because they, they don't have any. Uh, MM, their Marine Resource Division has no regulations. Their Fishing Authority has no regulations. And so I told them, well, maybe I'll talk to the law school and see if we can work something out where we can get some like expertise to help y'all. And I'm assuming it's going to be that way with a lot of the nations, or a lot of the, the states there. Yeah, so I think um, you know this is just the start of hopefully a relationship that will continue with the AG's office there. Hopefully we can work with them to get the PAN uh, regulations passed. But then you also started working on some of the fishing regulations and finding lanes for the Yacht Fishing Authority and Marine Resources Management Division. And hopefully you can continue working on pro bono hours to continue that relationship and maybe start exploring, you know, talking to partners in other jurisdictions and other states in FSM to see if they're also interested in, in having a legal intern come. And maybe we can you know, do this again in, in some of the other places. So hopefully this is the beginning of more to come. But we'll keep everybody uh, posted. Thanks, James. Thanks.